A 730 kilogram cannon rests on a frictionless surface and fires a 0.02 kilogram cannonball with a velocity of 380 meters per second. A. What's the change in momentum of the system? B. What is the recoil velocity of the cannon? C. What is the kinetic energy of the cannon and the cannonball after the cannon was fired? And part D, which I've erroneously written as C here, what is the change in the energy of the system? And in this case, what we're talking about is the energy before the explosion occurred and the kinetic energy after the explosion. First, let me write what this situation looks like before and after the explosion occurs. So before the explosion, the cannon is at rest. The cannonball is at rest. I'm going to make my cannonball shoot to the left and I'm going to make my cannon recoil to the right. Now making to the left positive in this problem just because of the way I sketched it. Now we want to use the principle of conservation of linear momentum to answer these questions. Question A says, what is the change in momentum of the system? Let me write down the principle of conservation of linear momentum. Now, I can write the change in the momentum as the final momentum minus the initial momentum. If the final momentum and the initial momentum are equal to each other, I mean, that's what conservation of linear momentum says, then the final momentum minus the initial momentum is equal to zero. There is no change in momentum of the system. Basically, that's what it means to have momentum conserved. There is no change in momentum from before and after the explosion happens. Now, in part B, we're trying to figure out what is the recoil velocity of the cannon. In other words, this gun's going to kick. What speed is it going to move backwards immediately after the cannonball leaves the barrel? Again, let's apply conservation of linear momentum and in terms of two objects moving in one dimension. There it is written out in all its glory. But the right-hand side of this equation is equal to zero because the initial velocity of the cannon is zero, the initial velocity of the ball is zero, and so all of that stuff on the right-hand side is equal to zero. Now, if that stuff on the right is zero, I know numbers for everything on the left except the cannon's final velocity. Let me solve for that. The fact that the right-hand side is zero allows me to write the following equation. And now I can put numbers in. And I'll substitute that into my calculator to come up with a result. And I get that the cannon recoils with a speed of negative 0.01 roughly meters per second. In other words, it's moving in the opposite direction that the cannonball is moving. Now we're ready for part C which says, what is the kinetic energy of the cannonball and the cannon after the cannon was fired? We're trying to find the final total kinetic energy. So let's figure that out. There are two pieces to the kinetic energy. Part of it's in the cannon, part of it's in the ball. So now I've written out the kinetic energy in terms of mass and velocity, and now I'll feed in the numbers. I get that the final total kinetic energy is 1,444 joules. Now part D asks us, what is the change in the energy of the system? Well, something had to give kinetic energy to the ball and to the cannon, and that something was the gunpowder. Now, I imagine that there was more than just kinetic energy involved here. There was heat that was generated, there was sound that was generated, and light. There was an explosion that occurred behind this cannonball inside the cannon in order to project the thing forward. So I can't tell you how much energy that was, 
but I can tell you that there were roughly 1400 joules of kinetic energy. Now we're ready for the last example in this section. 27.3. This is a two-dimensional collision problem. A 1,000 kilogram car is traveling east at a speed of 20 meters per second. It collides at an intersection with a 3,000 kilogram truck traveling north at 10 meters per second. The vehicles stick together on impact. What is the velocity, speed, and direction of the wreckage immediately after impact? This has horizontal and vertical components of initial momentum. And so there are going to be horizontal and vertical components of final momentum. This is also a totally inelastic collision because the vehicles stick together on impact. Let's begin. So here go these vehicles. They're approaching each other. They're going to collide. They're going to stick together. Now, if I think about the car moving along the positive in the positive x direction and the truck moving along the positive y direction then my collision after looks like it's going to be somewhere in the first quadrant of an xy coordinate system if the collision happens at the origin then that's going to slide off somewhere in the first quadrant but let's figure out exactly where in the first quadrant it's going to slide so after the collision, I'm making these two objects stick together. I'm showing a vector that is the final velocity that makes some angle theta. And we want to find the length or the magnitude of that vector, and we want to find what the angle is. So let's employ conservation of linear momentum. Now I've got two vehicles. And so I can write this for two particles. But now I am going to hang on to the vector signs because there are going to be x and y components of these things in just a moment. Now I've written conservation of linear momentum. On the left hand side I have combined the mass of the truck and the car because they're moving together as a single unit. So I've got a new object, the combination of the car and the truck. It has some final velocity and it has some direction, but it moves as a single unit. Now, I can write this equation in the x direction and in the y direction. Let's start with the horizontal. I've got a whole bunch of variables here, but basically the horizontal equation says that the mass of the truck plus the mass of the car added together multiplied by the x component of the final velocity is going to be equal to the x momentum of the truck plus the x momentum of the car. Now, in this particular problem, if we say that east is the positive x direction and north is the positive y direction, I see that there is no initial x momentum of the truck. So I can say that the truck's initial velocity in the x direction is zero, and the momentum of the system in the x direction is totally due to the car. So I can write what the final velocity is in the x direction in terms of the things that I know. And now let me feed in the numbers. I'm going to call east the plus x direction. And now I'll put it in my calculator. And I get that the final velocity has a horizontal part that's 5 meters per second to the right. Let's play the same game with the vertical component of the velocity of the momentum. So vertically I can say that the momentum of the truck and the car together in the y direction is equal to the y component of the truck's momentum plus the y momentum of the car's momentum. Well in this particular situation I see that the initial momentum of the car has no vertical component. It's only horizontal. So that term is going to disappear. And now I can solve for what the final velocity in the y direction is. And I can feed in the numbers. 
and I get that the y component of the final velocity is plus 7.5 meters per second. Well, now I'm trying to figure out what is the total final velocity. I have a horizontal part that's plus 5. I have a vertical part that's plus 7.5. I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem and a trig function to solve this. So there's the vector diagram showing the x and the y components of the final velocity along with the hypotenuse and the angle that I'm looking for. Let me figure out the hypotenuse first. So basically we're solving a vector problem now. Let me put in the numbers. And out pops the result. I get that the combination travels off from the collision point at a speed of about 9 meters per second. Now I'm looking for the angle. And I can choose whatever trig function I want. I like tangent. And so I'm going to figure out what the angle is. So there's my expression for the tangent of theta. The final y component divided by the final x component of the velocity. Let me feed in the numbers. And now I'll put that into my calculator. And I get that the angle is roughly 56 degrees. So now putting it all together, what I say is that this mess leaves the collision point sticking together with a speed of 9 meters per second at an angle of 56 degrees north of east, if you want to think of it in that way. Basically 56 degrees up from the plus x axis. So, when you deal with vector conservation of linear momentum, write the horizontal part, write the vertical part, solve each part separately, and then figure out what the problem is asking you to do. You'll have vector methods that you'll use, and depending on what the problem asks, then you'll employ those vector methods in different way. But for now, that's it.